In this video, I'm going to talk about uh, the basic trig graphs and its properties. And when you're talking about trig graphs, uh, you're always relating to the circular function. So this is a unit circle of radius 1. Whenever you say unit circle, it refers to radius of 1 unit. That's why it's called a unit circle. So I'll call this, or this is called a unit circle. So the radius is 1, so this point is 1, 0, this point is 0, 1, negative 1, 0, and uh, 0, negative 1. So when you're talking about a unit circle, you, when you're talking about a sine graph or a cosine graph, you're talking about uh, a particle moving around the circle from this point, 1, 0. So this is the starting point. Okay, so we can call this the starting point, PT stands for point, and by convention, you always go anti-clockwise. Okay, so that's why I've shown the arrow, anti-clockwise. So when a, when a particle is at P, sorry, at A, it has moved zero degrees, okay? And uh, when the particle is at B, it has moved 90 degrees. When it is C, it's 180 degree. 270 at D, and again it comes back, it moves 360 degrees. So that's one convention that you need to know. Now, in the previous video, uh, let me again repeat I hope you understand cos is cos theta is adjacent. So this is your x and this is your y. Now, p is any arbitrary point on the circle, and the coordinate of p is x and y. So you can say this distance, suppose, say, let me name this as, say, M. So OM is X and PM is Y. So cos theta is X over Y, which implies X is nothing but cos theta. So in circular trig, you have to relate X coordinate with cos theta. Same way, you can say sine theta is Y over 1 because it's opposite over hypotenuse. The hypotenuse is 1, so which implies y is equal to. So this is something that you need to keep in mind. It's always helpful if you know, or if you can relate your x coordinate with cos theta and your y coordinate with sine theta. Okay, so I've made up a table of theta, x, which is cos theta, and y, which is sine theta. So when you're talking in 0 degrees, you're talking about a particle which has, hasn't started moving. So, or in other words, it is at point A. When is, when is it, when it is at point A, so let me write, so this is referring to point A, okay? Zero degrees means it is at point A in this diagram. So, the x coordinate is, x coordinate is 1, and the y coordinate is 0. So, in terms of cos theta, you can say cos 0 is 1, okay, and sine 0 is 0. Okay, I'll let me get your calculator out, and if this is a graphic calculator, uh, any calculator would do, uh, but the only thing is you have to go and set your set and look at setting. We are talking in terms of degrees, so I'll change the setting to degrees. So if you press cos 0, that will give you 1. The reason cos 0 is 1 means your cos corresponds to your x coordinate. At point A, the x coordinate is 1. Okay, and if you pry, press sine 0, sine 0 is 0 because at A, your y coordinate is 0 and sine corresponds to your y coordinate. Okay, so now at 90 degree, at 90 degree, we are at which point? We are at point B. Okay, at point B, the x coordinate is the x coordinate is zero, and the y coordinate is one, and that's why cos 90 is zero, and sine 90 is one. So let me show you that. Uh, cos 90 is zero, and sine 90 is one. Okay. Now the next is that. 180 degree, you are at point C, so 
So now you can understand the pattern. So this is minus 1, 0. This is at D. Okay. At D, you have got the x coordinate is 0 and your y coordinate is negative 1. Same way, this is at again A. So you are repeating yourself. That is 1, 0. So this is how I would want you to read this. So cos 0 is 1, cos 90 is 0. Cos 180 is negative 1, cos uh, 270 is 0. So whenever you, you are looking at a cos, you are looking that corresponds to your x coordinate. So when you are saying cos 270, what are you saying? The particle has moved 270 degrees. So you should understand in, on a unit circle, you are at point D. And your x-coordinate as point D is 0, and that's why uh, cos 270 is 0. If someone is saying, what is sine 180, you should be thinking of a unit circle. You are talking about a particle moving to point C. That is 180 degree. And as it is sine, you are looking at your y-coordinate, and the y-coordinate is 0. That's why sine 180 is 0. So let me draw the graph of sine first. So let me make up a table. So we know uh, sine, okay, let me draw the axis first. So this is my y axis and this is my x axis. Okay, doesn't look to be straight, doesn't matter. So this is, I'll tell you what this is later on. Not drawn to scale, okay. So this is say 0, this is 0, this is negative 1, this is 1. And here this is say 90 degrees, this is 180 degrees, I'll explain what I'm doing. This is 270 degrees and 360 degrees. Okay, so what do we know? Sine, we're, we're talking about, we, I want to draw the graph of y is equal to sine of sine theta. Okay, write sine x. So then, uh, when uh, so sine uh, sine zero. Okay, so let me write like this: when theta is zero, if theta is zero, y is equal to sine zero, and sine zero is zero. Okay. So let me use a different color. So this is zero. So sine zero is zero sine 90 okay let me look up this table what is sine 90 sine 90 is 1 okay so this is 0 this is 1 okay and of course you may think what are the points between 0 and 90 i'll tell that later sine 180 sine 180 is 0 sine 270 is negative 1 so i'll plot the points now so sine 180 is uh, 0 sine 270 is negative 1 and this is 360 okay so and the graph this is called one cycle or one period so this the sine graphs look like this i'll show this on a graphic calculator it reaches the maximum at 90 then comes back to this point and this is called the sine graph so this is called the maximum. So let me write the word full word. This is called the maximum. And this is called the minimum. So for a basic sine graph, y is equal to sine of it, sine theta or sine x, your maximum is, oh, I should have written the other way around. I write it right, negative one year. I should have written one year and negative one. Okay, so this is, now this axis, your x-axis, so this is your y-axis, and this is your x-axis. So for this graph, this x-axis becomes the baseline. I name this as the baseline. So baseline, so I'll show, use the word BL. This is the short you can write. This is maximum, and this is minimum. So <clears throat> this is called the maximum, this is the minimum. So you can say, Sine graph starts at zero, peaks at a 90 degree or reaches its maximum at 90, hits the baseline at 180, hits the minimum at 
270 and comes back to this point. So this is one full cycle. And if you keep on moving, if you add, say, 90 to this, this will be 450. So again, it will reach that. And again, the cycle goes on. I'll show you this on a calculator. So this is called, this, is, this has a period of, so let me write the critical words here. So the period or the cycle is 360 degrees. Or in, what does this mean? In 360 degrees, or in, from 0 to 360, or in once it has a period of 360, that means this repeats itself in 360 degrees. So that's why it's called a period or a cycle. Now this is called the amplitude. Okay, so let me write the critical words. This is called the amplitude. Okay, amplitude in this case is 1. Amplitude is 1. Okay, so the amplitude is 1. Now, the, now where is 1? How can you see 1 on the equation? So, if you, let me write the equation again. So, y is equal to sine theta. I can write as 1 sine theta. 1 sine theta. This 1 is the amplitude. And this is 1 theta. And this 1 tells you that for one cycle of a sine curve, it takes 360 degree. Okay. So these are the crucial words that you need to remember. I'll, come, I'll talk about course graph in the next uh, video.